For this assignment, you're going to create an animal in geometric shapes and curves. So how we're going to do this is the first thing you need to do is open up a new document. It needs to be 8.5 by 11, so file new, print document, make sure it's a letter size or 8.5 by 11. So um, 8.5 by 11 height or width if you want depending on your animal if you have a tall animal like a flamingo the uh, vertical orientation is going to be great if you have an animal like mine like a fox the horizontal orientation would be better choice so depending on your animal pick your orientation and then make sure it's let eight and a half by eleven click create that will create a blank document for you then you're going to find a picture online of your animal and you're going to bring it into Illustrator and pretty much make it as large as the paper. Then what you're going to want to do is lock that layer as I have here. The next step is using the pen tool you're going to outline your layer of your your animal. So in my case I'm going to use my pen tool and I'm going to create an outline of the fox. Now I've already done it ahead of time so here you can see my very simple outline. I'm not going super crazy over the details. I'm not worried about like the little fur on his tail. You do want curves. Don't just click and have all angles and straight lines. You do want some curves. And if you have a gap in the feet, you kind of want to capture that as well. So make sure you get that outline with the curves. Then once you have the outline, you're going to take your circle tool and creating actual perfect circle so holding down the shift button you are going to create circles then what you're going to do is you're going to use these circles to kind of divide up your animal in a natural manner so I'm going to put this circle here with his hip I'm going to hold down alt and make a copy and basically you're going to do different size circles all over your animal you don't want to go too overboard but you're going to kind of go with like the natural curves of where the animal is and its body shape depending on the type of animal it is so once you're done you're going to have something similar to this like i said try not to go too overboard but you do want to capture some of those geometric areas and shapes in your animal now, once you have all of your circles and your outline, I highly recommend that you make a copy of this layer. So I have everything each step done on a separate layer, which really helps it in case I need to backtrack and I messed up. So I have my outline on one layer. And then what I did is I made a copy of it, put my circles on it. So I have the outline and the circles. I made a copy of that layer, which is this one here. And then what I did, I'll show you on this one, what I did once I had all my circles in my outline is I selected everything, circles outline, using my pathfinder tool, I divided all of my lines. So now everything is, is its own shape. And you want to ungroup it. And then I went in and I deleted all of the unnecessary areas. So, what that looks like is this. So I had all my circles. I used the Pathfinder tool, cut them all so they're their own individual shapes, and then I deleted all of the excess stuff that I didn't need. Now, once I have all of my circles here that have been cut, I'm going to select this whole area, all of my lines and my outlines. I'm gonna go up to Object, and I'm gonna go down to Live Paint and click Make. Now this allows us to be able to fill in these areas with color. Now you'll notice it's live paint because it's got these funky little symbols here. So once you do that, you are ready for the next step. This is my live trace layer. Once again, every time you click on it, you will have those little sp um, spots. So in order to use live trace, you are going to need to make some boxes of color. So you must have five boxes of color ranging from dark to light 
all for your animals. So here I have this red fox. So I picked a really dark kind of natural red, like pretty similar to his feet. And then I used this medium light and I got all the way down to this really light color that kind of looked like it was this color on his face. So you have to have a minimum of five squares um, or rectangles. Put them together at the top like this or at the bottom, but you do need to have these colors here. Make sure they're nice and neat, guys. Like You know how to use the align tool. You know how to remove the borders, and it just looks nice and clean. So now I have my image that's been um, made into a live paint, and I have my areas of color. Now, what you're going to do, using your live paint bucket, which is right here, you're going to paint this. Now, if your live paint bucket does not show up on your toolbar, come down here to the three little dots that says Edit Toolbar. Go over here and click Advanced. And my toolbar disappeared. So... Okay. Yeah, if you click Advanced, it should bring up your toolbar, not make it go away. Underneath the Shape Builder tool, which is usually the most common one that's on top, grab the Live Paint Bucket. What this allows us to do is to fill in each area with a color. Now, if you hold down the Alt key, this little eyedropper comes up and you can select the color you want. And then you can fill in an area. So you're going to go through and you're going to select all the areas that you want to fill in with each color, alternating in colors. What you should end up with is something like this. So I have all my areas filled with colors. I'm trying to stay to those natural curves. You don't need to do every single spot with a different color. You want these curves where the shapes actually connect. Then once you have all of your areas filled and it looks really nice and it kind of follows these curved lines, you're going to select it all and you're going to turn off the outline so it's nice and clean. So, sorry, I'm backing up. So we have done all of that. So we're now on this layer here. So yours looks should look something like this. And if you want it to kind of adjust some of the colors, you can. I could technically change this one here. And all you have to do is bring up your live paint tool. Sample your color and fill it. So you can kind of test each color if you want. So once you have it to where you like it, you want to turn off the background photo. Now, if it bothers you, you can ungroup and it's not going to let you group them. So Basically, each one is an individual piece, but as you can see, it's still together because it's live paint. And then you pretty much have created this kind of vector logo looking animal. And that's pretty much it. But try and keep these curves in circles because that's the whole point of this is creating these geometric shapes. Make sure you have your color swatches up top and your animal and then your actual animal should be underneath and just turned off. And that's it for this tutorial.